Hello friends, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me today for another near-death experience interview. Today with Jason Janice. Jason's story is so beautiful in its simplicity and its message of love and I'm really excited to share it with you guys and we are going to jump right into the interview. Thank you for watching. Jason, thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm so honored and excited to talk about your near-death experience. So would you like to just share the events leading up to that and then the experience in whatever way you feel led to share? Absolutely. It's a, it's a pleasure being here, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Um, my near-death experience happened in 2020. It was right when the pandemic hit. Um, I remember being at work and all of us were talking about what, what all this is about. Um, and, you know, as a guy, you think you're indestructible. And well, at the end of March, early April, um, I became very ill, very, very ill. Came home. I started coughing up blood. I tried to take a bite of my food and all this blood came up um, and I couldn't stop coughing. And I panicked, <clears throat> didn't know what to do. I couldn't, all of a sudden I couldn't breathe. I was wheezing. Um, so I ended up making a, a frantic FaceTime call to my, my ex-wife, who was a nurse. She finally answered, and I don't remember much after that. I just remember waking up in the ICU. My hands were strapped to the bed. My hands were, or my feet were strapped to the bed. Um, and people in my face, Jason, 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 do you know where you are? I'm like, you know, I, I couldn't talk because I have a two inch tube down my throat you know every, every, everything you've seen in an emergency room or an ICU in a movie was that's the way I was except I couldn't I couldn't move my hands you know you could move maybe about a half an inch because they were afraid you could wake up you would just you know rip everything out and <clears throat> so it was very I woke up to a lot of pain um I couldn't breathe really even though the machine was keeping me up you know it was just a horrific horrific incident um and again, how long that was taking place, I don't know. Um, but I was on a ventilator for a month. Um, and then as I, as I was improving, they got me off the ventilator. Um, I could now breathe on my own. I could <clears throat> talk. I couldn't really talk, um, but I could, <laughs> you know, one of those things. And it was just a very brutal experience. Um, you see that stuff in the movies and you're all, oh, you know, no, nah, it's, it's an assault on your body. What had, what had happened to me. Um, and when you're, when you're in that state of dying, I guess your mind does not sleep. So they had me on, you know, fentanyl and, and all of this. And, um, so when your your body, your, your eyes may be closed, but your brain, you are you're there, you're fully awake, you are, you know, I went through horrific, not nightmares, but um, I don't know what, what, what to call it. The only thing I can call it is nightmares because just, I thought I was being kidnapped. I thought I was being, you know, taken to some strange place because your mind is fully awake. Your body isn't, your body is in the process of, in my case, dying, um, but your mind doesn't, your mind doesn't sleep. And it's trying to make sense of what was going on. And um, it was just truly a horrific experience, something that I, I, I never want to go through again. And my heart goes out to anybody that is on a ventilator right now that has COVID, that is in, in dying. I, I pray to you every day that God comes and comforts you like he did me. So let's fast forward to the end of the month. I'm, I'm now okay, I've made it through, they had, they had saved me. But um, all the while I was there, even on the ventilator, I kept staring off to the left, which up in the corner was a TV. Um, and at the time I didn't know why, but my spirit was telling me there's, there's people there. I mean, I could, I could feel it and people, well, how can you feel anything? It's, it's all on a vibrational level. We're made of light and and energy and I could feel the energy coming from there. So I kept turning my head this way. And the lady, you know, the nurse is like, you want, you want the TV on? I'm like, no, uh, <laughs> if you only knew what was standing over there. 
you know, you wouldn't. So um, I just kept staring over there. So the room was empty and I was, I was left by myself and I just went through this horrific experience. And I, I guess it was me feeling vulnerable um, that, you know, everybody's gonna have the worst day of their life. I don't care who you are. We're mortal, we are going to die. Um, and it's kind of along the lines of, you know, Jesus' parables, you know, when they were at the wedding, why don't all the servers just go hunker down in the back and fall asleep? Because you never know when the boss is gonna show up and say, what are you doing, right? So um, I felt very vulnerable and I shouldn't say the word because there's no excuse for it. But I was scared, you know, and so I, I, I began, I tried to get up on my elbows, but I was shaking so bad. I couldn't talk and I just bust out crying. I, I started crying, I calling God. I said, God, please don't let me die, please. You know, and like I said, I wasn't, I was fine. I could breathe, I could talk, I was, everything was fine. But my, my body in my, in my head, I, I just called out to him, please don't let me die, please. You know, and like we had just discussed a little bit, you know, from a very early age, I, you know, I, I abandoned the church. I said, I don't need to go, something's not right here. And so I abandoned God in Christ for 35 years. I began, as we all do in our worst moments, who do we call to? God. We call to our Father, please. And I, did, I, was, no, I was no exception. Um, I called out to him. And I'm sobbing uncontrollably, hard, you know, please don't let me die. Um, I'm sorry I abandoned you, Lord. I'm sorry I abandoned you. I said, I love you with all my heart um, and all my soul and all that I am is yours. And I said, please forgive me of my sins. Um, I said, then I went into, I have two daughters. I said, please don't, please don't take my daughters from me, please. Um, I love them, please. If I get emotional, I'm sorry, because it's, it's, it's very real. Um, and then there's somebody on this earth that I love more than I ever thought possible. And I said, please don't take her from me, please. I can't, I, I have to be here. Please don't take me. You know, I, and I went through, I said, I want to hold her hand again. I, I love her. I want to kiss her. I want to be with her. And it was in that explanation of why I love her and how much I love her that all of a sudden it felt like a spotlight hit me. The room had almost, it was still there, but it had vanished. But it was just this spotlight of intense unconditional love um and it was warm it felt like I was placed in the middle of the sun and it just encompassed me but what I hadn't noticed at the time that I'd become level with the tv and I and I was like how is that possible because it was way up in 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 the corner of the room and I'm like I was looking down out the window and I and I looked at the grass and it was a green that I had never seen before um it was the most beautiful green. I'm not a green guy, trust me. Um, it was the mo I just looked outside and said, wow, look at the colors. And I said, look at how beautiful it is. Look at the, 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 the tree trunks, how beautiful brown. The, the colors were alive. And I was just like, wow. And I, I thought to myself in my head, you know, I said, what a beautiful day to die. Not realizing that I was no longer in my body, you know, and I'm like, I was standing. It was no, all the pain was gone. There was absolutely no pain, but nothing but love and unconditional acceptance. Um, and I kept staring towards the TV and in front of me now because I knew there was another presence there and that presence was the Lord. So, um, and I could feel it. I could just feel his love in his, in, it was intense, but, and at the same time, it was beautiful. It, lo it was loving, it was calming. Um, in my, and I knew I was home and I just accepted that. And I didn't think about anything this world ever had to offer, including my children, um, anybody. I was, even though I was still in the hospital room, I wasn't there. I was, heaven had opened up to me. God had answered me in person. And that love that I felt was him. And that light, if I would have been able to see it, was him 
and um, there was no sense of time. So I can't say that it lasts 30 seconds, that it lasts half an hour or an hour. I don't know. Um, I just know that I was wrapped up and in love and all my sins were forgiven. Uh, I was welcomed home. Um, but in the same time as I was enveloped in this, and again, there was no, no reference of time um, from right in front of me from where I was, two hands, you know, I don't want to say push, but they, they, they were on my, and they were huge. I mean, they, they felt huge. They covered up my whole chest and the top half, and they just gently kept, you know, good going like this and pushing my, my soul back into my body. And then when I was there, it was lights out. It was, nobody could wake me up. Nobody could do anything. When I finally did wake up, the nurses were in there frantic. We, we were trying to wake you, we were shaking you. And I'm like, no, oh, I, I wasn't there. I mean, I don't, I wasn't there. And it, it, I just looked over that way towards the TV again. And there was, of course, you know, that presence wasn't there. I was, I don't know, I just wasn't there. I wasn't in that realm anymore. And um, when you're there, you are, it's not a, as we, as you and I are talking, it's everything is just like a computer. It's just downloaded into your, into your spirit or to your frame. And I was just given this unconditional love and acceptance. And like I said, I could see behind me. I knew nobody was in the room because I could see, I could see outside. I could see everything. And I was just like, you know, you come back and then you're put into this and it's like, <sighs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, it's, I, I want to call it like a jail, but it's like when you're that free and you're that in tune with everything around you, um, it feels like a weight, like an anchor when, when you come back into it. And, you know, even though it was a couple of years ago, I still, you know, I find myself picking at my, you know, like we're not, <laughs> you know, we're not this, we're not. You know, we are, we're infinite beings that have been around for millennia. And we chose, as I call it now, this ride that we're on, which, and I've heard in several of your other videos of, of school. You know, yeah, we've all gone to school. Through. Now, this is still school. This is, you know, we're here to learn. And when you learn, you fail. You just know how not to do anything anymore, right? Okay. So um, I was, I was just given that experience of, of, of this is just my journey that I chose. And people say, well, this is God's will. No, God is abiding by the contract that we, <laughs> that we wrote up with him. And if you try and break that, he's gonna, he will slam the door in your face. He'll say, you know, no, no, no. Um, and I found that out the hard way several times in life. And you know what to do and what, you know, the direction that he wants you to go. So it's very humbling to know that even though you may feel insignificant because your problems are deep and hard and whatever, but I'm here to tell you that he is right there with you, right there with you every step of the way. And all you need to do is to learn how to love the right way to love. Cause that the word is used the wrong way. I love this. I no. That's, you know, we need to love each other. We need to love and forgive. And he forgave me. And not only that, he showed me what love was. And it, I failed my whole life, my 51 years on what love really is. Um, and he showed me how to love. He, and the first way he did that was by showing me how to love myself. And because I always thought, you know, I'm just, I'm just a guy. Well, no, I'm not. You know, he showed me who I was and without saying it showed me who was affected by me and how much they love me. And it was so humbling that I almost don't know what to do with it now, you know, because for 51 years, I was this way, and, you know, and when I got into that moment or when I was in the transitional space, I just want to call it heaven. Um, he didn't bring out his checkboard and say, well, you know, you, your religion matched this and, and you were this one. Oh, you know, there was none of that. God does not care about your religion. 
I'm here. I know that's going to affect some people and that's okay, but it's the truth. God does not care, nor does the Lord care what your religion are or what it is. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in my son? And do you repent? If they, and you answer all three of those with yes, you are forgiven and you are loved more than you could ever, ever possibly imagine. You know, as a father, as a mother, you know the love for your children and the love that God has, as you have experienced and I fail. <laughs> we fail in comparison when we say, well, you know, we love our kids. Man, it doesn't even come close. It doesn't. It fails. Everything fails in comparison to the way God and the Lord loves us. And, you know, that was my experience. It was, you know, I was out of harm's way, but I was vulnerable. I was beaten. I was battered. Um, and I called on him in desperation and out of love and fear and everything. And he was there. He did not abandon me. And that, and that weighs heavily on my mind. Um, I pulled away from my, what you would call organized religion. Um, I went to my pastor, said, hey, I've had this experience. I need help. I need help. I don't know how to process what happened to me. Um, and he looked at me like I was a plague, like refusal of phone calls. You know, he, he, you know everything that he said was a farce. And after that, I was just like, you know, I was right in the first place when I was like eight or nine. I don't need that. Even Christ said that you soon you don't need that. All you need to do is talk to me. You know, just give me your heart and love me. And that's what it is. That's the whole message that he showed me. It's love. The world would be so different right now if we all loved one another like he wants us to. There would be no fear. There would be no crime. There would be nothing but love. And um, this profoundly changed my life. I have a love in me that I never, as Jesus called it, a eternal well, so to speak, um, of love that is just overflowing. Do I have bad days? We all do. We're human. We, you know, we have our good days with bad days, but, you know, I find myself praying for others, not just myself, but others. Um, and I've never done that before. And I was just like, I don't know what to do with this abundance of love, but that's what he wants from us. That's the one thing he requires is love. You know, it's, it seems like a simple thing, but yet it is the most put down, you know, I love my car. I love my new house. Don't you love this? Don't you love that? No, that's not love. <laughs> love is being able to, to help somebody up or as, right after my experience, there was a lady at the checkout gas. Now, mind you, I had just lost everything. They repossessed my car, eviction notices um, because I was off work recovering, nobody cared. And in, in the deepest moments, of my, of my experience is when I knelt at the bottom, at the end of my bed and I completely surrendered to the Lord and to Father. And I said, I will do your will. I love you. I need your help. I, I need you now, please. And at that moment, great job came. I got back on my feet. I have been in extreme health. I mean, like nobody would even believe me if I said, you know, Six months ago, I was, you know, dying in the ICU. So, but there's this woman up there, raggedy clothes, you know, probably hadn't showered in days. She had this little coin purse and she had a gallon of milk on, on, on the thing. And she was dumping out her, and she's wiping tears because you know this is the only money she had in the world, right? Long line and the cashier's getting mad. So I, I, I walked past two people that were in front of me. I said, what's the matter? And, you know, she couldn't say it. And I said, you know, I, I didn't have any money. So I gave, you know, him the 20 and I said, you know, just take her milk and that's fine. And she said, you know, and she was just sobbing. And she said, can I hug you? And this is in the middle of, you know, I just got out of the ICU. I'm fragile. And I'm said, yeah, absolutely. Give me a hug. And I said, it's going to be okay. I've been there. And I said, you know, God loves you. And I, and I said, so you'll be okay. 
and and that and that was that. And I felt when I got home, I was like on cloud nine. It was like nobody, you know, a job wouldn't have made that, money wouldn't have made that, you know, nothing would have made that except, you know, she went home knowing that she was loved and that everything would be okay. And that's the only thing that mattered to me in that moment. And I was just there to pay for gas, you know, but we need more of that. We need more of that desperately. And that's the kind of love that he's left me with. And I, it's like coming out of me, like he said, it would be a living well within you. And he's not, he's not wrong. So, you know, I wasn't flying everywhere or going everywhere, but God came to me in my need, the God that sees me, you know, and he, he heard my cries. He heard me and he shows up when I needed him the most, because we're all going to have that day. We're all going to have that day. And um, what people don't understand is I want to make this very, very clear. God is love. He is nothing but unconditional love. He loves us to the point of where he sent his only son to open the kingdom of heaven within us so we could be there. And that he holds, believe it or not, no judgment of on, on our mistakes, it's, except he requires us to ask for forgiveness and mean it. And you are forgiven. And, and in that moment, when you can realize that, Life becomes simple. Life becomes easy. And when, when that has happened, he's humbled me in the same way. Like I wasn't a nice person. I didn't, I didn't prior to this my whole life, I didn't have empathy or love for anybody, including family members. I just didn't care. I was wrapped up in me, 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 me. And the Lord says, you know, live a humble life. You know, I will provide everything from the clothes to the food, worry about nothing because fear is irrational. It, it doesn't belong here. There's nothing to fear. Um, and when you surrender like that, it's true. There is no fear. It's an irrational thing. There's, it's the absence of love. And if love is everything, then the absence of love would be the darkness and fear and everything that comes with that. And he's humbled me to the point of where not only I can see that, but I can feel it on a daily basis. It's like, you know, when you stick your plug, it, your finger in a plug by accident, you get zapped by that electricity. I have been tuned into, I guess, I still have a hold on some of the, the spirit world. I can feel people around me all the time. Um, I'll be sitting here on the couch watching TV or reading. My whole body will start to tingle. Start my belly, you know, I'm going to work up my arm and I'm like, I'll stop what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, I know you're here. I know you're here because I can feel you. We got that vibration going on and we're on the same level and I can feel it. And there are times it becomes, I'm so overwhelmed by it. And I'll just sit here and I'll just start to cry. And because it is living inside you, you can feel it for all those that choose. And I know you feel the same way because you're so passionate about your videos and how you want to communicate to us. I can feel it in me. And I was like, I haven't been disconnected to somebody in a long time because your views are right along with mine, where when you changed from Christianity to universalism is now exactly how I feel. And it started with that moment of my NDE in the ICU where God didn't say, well, you know, he didn't care about my religion. Didn't care one bit. It's all of us down here that are fighting over old books, you know, dusty trails somewhere that were, you know, that's 2000 years ago. Do you think God cares about that or the Lord, whether you where you're living in Bethlehem or Capernaum right now? No, he does. I'm telling you, he doesn't. But we're fighting over those lands and those dirty books and those dust. And, you know, he doesn't care. He does not care. He wants love. He wants your love. He wants, you know, you to ask for forgiveness. And all, all is forgiven. And we will all see heaven. Now, will some of us be punished? Yes. I firmly believe that. But that's in the context of his judgment. 
are we going to be forever tormented? There's no way. If that was the case, I would have been the first one down there. Um, no. But will he correct us in the ways that we need to be corrected in? Absolutely. And, you know, I think what everybody's worst fear is in life, and even from me now, is the absence of love. If there was, you know, nothing, if there was just, what's, what would be your worst fear is to fall asleep and just never exist? Wouldn't that be horrific? But to some, what would that be? That's hell, wouldn't it? You just no longer cease to exist. Your spirit is just gone. And to me, that would be hell. Knowing what I know now, knowing where I was in heaven and God being there with me, you know, that, that, would, that would terrify me as, you know, as hell is just to simply cease to exist. But that's not who we are. You're already millennia years old. Thousands and thousands of years. I am too. Everybody walking on this earth is. You know, we chose to come down for this experience. Why? Because we're here to love, forgive, and to learn. We are eager to learn. And, you know, the sense that I've got in that, in that near-death experience is that almost we're revered in a way for wanting to come down here and experience what a broken bone would be like to experience loss and to go what you know, go through what I went through in that ICU, which I do not wish on anybody. That is a horrific experience, and something that is just not ever worth wanting to go through. But yet I chose to go through it. Why? Well, now I know. If hindsight is twenty twenty, I got to go to heaven with my father, and he showed me my self worth and the worth of every soul on this on this on this planet. And, you know, and that was, again, a life-changing event. Um, I know it's not glamorous. I know it's not, you know, flying through the clouds and waking up in a pasture and in heaven and having all these. And I asked myself, well, why wasn't I given that? And um, it, it was made clear through, you know, research and stuff that just wasn't meant to. This was my experience. This is what he needed to give me and my soul you know, was energized and happy to be with dad again and our father. And um, I have gone now down a different path. I've chosen to, to leave my, my faith, my religion, and um, follow you and universalism and experience what that's like. It's been, even though I'm by myself, it's been difficult because you're alone. I don't have anybody to talk to about it. So, you know, for being gone for so long, then being back, and then all of a sudden I yanked myself back out. Um, it's just been an interesting journey, but one of which, you know, God is saying, you know, I want you to talk about me. Miracles take place. You know, all, all of us that have NDEs are God's way of saying, I'm here. And the Lord saying, I'm right here. You know, you need to tell others. And again, it comes down, I don't care your religion, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Catholic, whether you're a Buddhist, it doesn't matter. He just wants you and everybody else here to know that I'm alive. I see you, I hear you. But you need to, as you say, open that kingdom, you know, that's within all of us, because it's right here. It's our love. And, you know, when like the Lord said, you won't see the Holy Spirit, and sometimes you may not even know what it's trying to do to you, but you'll feel it. And, and I think that's where a lot of us, sometimes we get lost because we don't know what that is. We don't know how to handle that, you know, because it can be overwhelming, you know, and, um, and that's where I fit right now. I'm trying to even two years later, still understand how that, how that happened. And sometimes you're just not meant to understand. You're just meant to, what's that word? Have faith and believe. And, and that's, that's where I am. He wants me to talk about it. I feel it. I've tried to let go of this. I've tried to put it on the back burner. I've tried to just leave it alone. 
and every day it gets pushed way back. It's right here. And, you know, he's telling me to talk about him and how can I deny him? I won't anymore. I refuse. Thank <laughs> you.